So, brother, you and all the other people, the torturous, these are torturous conversations we're having. Don't torture yourself. Don't torture yourself. Get your passport. Get the hell out of the country because, hey, we're coming. And guess what, bro? You ain't going to like it one bit. Your crimes and your treason, Comey, all of you. Go ahead. Go go to the ends of the earth. We will hunt you down and bring you back. Drive the vermin out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> Biden, you and your crime family are nothing but trash. For Joe Biden and, uh, and, uh, and Dr. Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, all in the Biden. They're a bunch of feral dogs, right? It's a family of feral dogs. We're going, to have to fuma- we're going to have to fumigate the lies of Joe Biden, the treason of Joe Biden, and how enfeebled he is. After that, it's not the tapes. We're coming after Lisa Monaco, Merrick Garland, the senior members of DOJ that have prosecuted President Trump, Jack Smith. That's where you come in. You're the vanguard of this revolution. We're going to do what the Romans did to Carthage. We're going to salt the earth around it so there'll never be another building there again. We're going to rebuild something else. There'll be something that comes up and is rebuilt along the lines that's appropriate. We've got to go back to the beginning. We've got to go back to Russiagate. we got to go back to who did that. we got to go back to Mola's commission. we got to go back to Andrew Weissman and MSNBC and the New York Times and all of it. Right? Every FBI agent, all the CIA, DHS, Chris Ray, all of them. It's going to be a new day. And MAGA will run things. They're going to know that MAGA is not only ascendant, MAGA is in charge. It's very simple. Victory or death. What you just saw there was Steve Bannon, Trump's main advisor from his last campaign. He's currently in prison because he didn't want to cooperate with the January 6th commission about the attack on the Capitol. And he may be released before the election. And he's still on a rampage. He's out for revenge. This is what's going on. Why did I show this video? Well, this video was a reaction video to the one that Alan Parr and many others that are making of the reason why you should vote for the Republican Party. And my argument, and I'm going to debunk some things, and we're going to talk about it. I don't have my notes with me, guys, but I've got a ton of stuff written down. But we're going to talk about several things over several videos. And this is just the introductory video to that, to this video of why would anybody in today's, in their right mind, stand by what they call the Republican Party. And the reason why I showed that to you is because the Republican Party is no In previous videos, I've highlighted how MAGA Republicans have embraced core elements of fascism. The combination of fascism and Christian nationalism is called Christofascism, a term first used half a century ago by the theologian Dorothy Zola. Fascists rise to power by characterizing their opponents as subhuman. Christo-fascists take it a step further by casting opponents as not just subhuman, but actually demonic. People like Nancy Pelosi, she's a demon. Framing opponents as enemies of God makes violence against them not only seem justifiable, but divinely sanctioned and almost inevitable. We are going to put on the armor of God. strap on a Glock on the side of us just in case. When we take power, they need to be given the death penalty. And these people that are suppressing the name Christ and suppressing Christianity, they must be absolutely annihilated when we take power. Christo-fascists want to strip away a wide range of rights Americans take for granted. Former Trump staffers involved in developing plans for a second Trump term have called for imposing biblical tests on immigration. The Republican Party is now MAGA. Trump and his minions have taken over the Republican Party. So when Allen made that video, and as you see here with that, with this particular picture here of the Democratic side and why this is going around in the conservative circles, and religious circles here, this reason why one should uh, vote for Republicans and things like that, uh, uh, and, you know, based upon the these issues that you see here in the middle and things. But what Allen and what everybody else that stands by this is leaving out, it's a whole lot of things and it's incomplete. So for those of you that believe in voting and those of you that want to be more informed, 
I'm going to give you the rest of things and give you my viewpoint and debunk several things that they talked about because it needs to be talked about because I feel that what Alan gave is incomplete and it's not fair for people to have uh, uh, what they are out here uh, and trying to make an informed decision that they need to know. So we'll talk about that. So this party that used to be the Republican Party that stood on so-called their value, conservative values and, and, and stood for, you know, a small government, stood by all of these various things. It's no more. The days of Mitt Romney is gone. The days of John McCain, gone. The days of Ronald Reagan, gone. The days where Bob Dole and all of these others, the Republicans and George Bush and all of them, it's all gone. It's gone. And MAGA has taken over. So now you, what you have is white nationalists, Christian nationalists, and a whole lot of everything else in religious fanatics. A governmental system and control to the point where Pharaoh had him making bricks. He had, a, that's what socialism is. That's what communism is. And it's amazing to me. You mean to tell me these polls are really uh, increasing for Kakalahamas or whatever her name is? I don't know, or Hamas or whatever. Kakla Hamas. Uh, but the, the point is, that was actually an accident, but it might be more of a God thing than I realize, you know. Um, that has taken over this movement. And this is why, one of the reasons why Trump and the the cowards that are still within the Republican Party that won't stand up to him, this is why they all need to be rejected. And we're going to talk about it as you look at this clip right here, where you see as our old buddy Nick Fuentes is angry. He's angry because a lot. This is one of the issues of what's going on. These white nationalists, they've got a problem with America. They've got a problem with diversity and what's going on. Take a listen. There's some foul language in here. So I'm going to give you a heads up and a warning that, you know, some things that, you know, Nick Fuentes likes to use foul language. So I'm just giving you a heads up. So I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll just give you that warning so that you can know. And then I'm going to show you another clip of how they are trying to play the game and play with us. Take a listen. Supremacist, bro. Oh, you're not a... What, what if I am? Then what? Okay, what if I am a white supremacist? Now what? Now what? We're being genocided in our own country. No one's got nothing to say about that. Ever. Even the white people have nothing to say about it. Even Tucker Carlson says it's got nothing to do with race. It's about voting rights. No, it is about race. It's about our white skin. It's about the fact that we sailed across the world. We went to the moon. We built rocket ships. We did the Industrial Revolution. We preserved the ancient texts. We evangelized the world. We stopped slavery. We stopped the genocides and the killing. We stopped those things. So it is about race, and it is about our, right, our race, and we'll let you know when we've gone too far. We'll tell you. I'm so, I don't actually care what non-white people think about whether I'm a white supremacist or not, okay? Because it's my race that is dying. It's my race that is being genocided. It's my race that is being replaced in the native land that my ancestors built, specifically the city of Chicago. People say, that's not an English name. Yeah, well, my ancestors literally built the city we've lived in for five generations. Here's the thing, um, my race being genocided is a much bigger problem than whether we're a little bit offensive to people that just got here, okay? Haitians do not belong here. They genocided all the white people on their island, why would we want them here? They cannibalized their own people today and they eat dirt. Why do we want them here? They don't belong here. And if I talk about it in a certain kind of way, Muslims who do not practice the religion of my ancestors or not part of the race of my ancestors or the civilization of my ancestors are going to tell me in my language that that's unacceptable. We're gonna go a very, very 
very, very long way before what we're doing is more severe and more concerning than what is being done to us. You understand? Our race is being castrated. Black people can be masculine. Black men can beat the shit out of their girlfriends and they can be masculine and they can be a baller and a boss and a gangster. It's white people. It's white guys that are being taught from a young age that they're pussies, that they have no balls. They get called white boys, this diminutive shit. They get taught to hate their own people, to apologize for who they are. They get bossed around by their women and God forbid we raise a hand to them we say something out of line, it's abuse, it's emotional abuse, I was insane, I was raped, okay? While we're being replaced by immigrants from the third world. And that's, you hear Nick Fuentes? This guy, this is the mindset. This is why you have Proud Boys. This is why you have all of these white nationalist groups and all of these people out there that is standing by Mr. Trump. This is not the say this is not the Republican Party no more. This is a whole different type of deal where they want civil war. They want the they want segregation. They want it all. And this is why and matter of fact for those of you that don't don't know, Nick Fuentes was at uh, Mar-a-Lago with dinner with Donald Trump. So, he this is shows you where we are. And I'm going to show you another clip right here. This is another white nationalist where we they call themselves Christian as well. Vincent James. This is why they they, they want power so bad because this is what it's all about now. MAGA is about revenge. Power is not the Republican Party. So all of them things that Alan meant well, everybody else, you know, when they talking about the Republican Party, a lot of people try to mean well, the people that they believe in the old Republican Party. But it's no more. And that's the problem. It's gone. And as Christians, you got to stop fooling yourself. So let's listen to Vincent James. I want you to see this crap, how, what he's talking about black folks. Take a listen. On the black folk, forget the pandering. Forget pandering, forget letting out, uh, granting clemency to black rappers and you know, all this fucking gay pandering hot sauce in the, in the purses. Forget the pandering. If anything's going to get the black folk, it's getting shot at right after you just got convicted of multiple felonies. That that's that'll get the black vote right there. And then if we see Trump go on like parole and he has like an ankle bracelet on, I mean that's gonna that's gonna lock that's gonna that's gonna secure the black vote right there. Now, as you see there, this is the way to get the black vote. See, because all they want, they want to use minorities, blacks or whatever, so that they can get their God-like figure in office, which is Trump, and then that's it. That once they use you, that's it. They 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 don't care. And, and many, unfortunately, there's there's blacks, and some of these, the ones we're talking about, that's in the thumbnails and all these that they didn't fall in for the okie doke. This ain't for. This is not of God. This whole movement is not, you know. And and this is the thing: politics and religion has been mixed up too. And we'll get into that. In the videos, we're going to talk about several things, but I want you to see that. So we've got the white nationalists. We've got the Christian nationalist people that are out here that then taken over. And this MAGA, we've got the Project 2025 with people that continue to try to act like that's not happening. As you see Trump here on the plane with the president of the Heritage Foundation, as they mapped out their plan for Project 2025 to put all of these things in place, including get rid of FEMA and funding for FEMA and all of that. This is all part of it. There's a reason why over 100 people in the, uh, they, they voted down funding for F FEMA. That's a whole nother message. See, so the Republican Party's dead. And unfortunately, Christians, 80% of white evangelicals put Trump in office. Uh, and 80% and of white evangelicals got him through the primaries. So this is the question as we close this video out for Alan Parr, Corey, Martin, we'll deal with Marcus Rogers because there's a lot to deal with him and all of these others that Christian YouTubers that promote this man, Mr. Trump. Here's the question that I have for them. 
we know maybe Marcus for sure, but did you vote for Donald Trump during the primaries? Because if you answer yes to these two questions, that's going to be a big problem. Did you vote when there was other candidates that had integrity, morals, conservatives, values, and things like that, and not all the chaos in the primaries? Did you vote for Donald Trump during then? And number two, do you believe the big lie that the election was stolen? We know Marcus Rogers does, as you see right here. What do pirates do? Steal, plunder. What do we believe happened in that election? I'm going to just leave that alone. I know, I know I'm going down the rabbit hole. And like I said, this is all speculation. I want to be clear. I'm not saying that God told me that. I just said, man, that's very interesting. That in That's the question for Corey. That's the question for uh, Alan Parr. That's the question for all of these other ones that we're talking about. And the ones that thumbnail, and all of them. It, dude, if you believe the lie, if you are a Christian and you answer yes to either one of them questions, that's a big problem. That is a big problem. And we're going to tackle it over these next upcoming videos. We're going to talk about that because as Christians, there's a whole lot of repenting that needs to go on. And as I close, we're going to talk about some of the issues that are on this chart that you see here. Once again, that's going around and that Alan put up in his video. And we're going to talk about abortion. We're going to talk about abortion. I'm going to make a specific abortion video of how back before I gave my life to the Lord, and I was in a situation where I got somebody pregnant and I threatened her life to, uh, to take her life if she did not get an abortion. I, and, and how the Lord dealt with me. And I'm going to how that whole story played out. I'm going to share that in a testimony and share that with you. So evangelism for God is going to be uh, uh, where we take all the uh, issues the church order away from. My name is Maurice Braxton, where we to take on the devil. What else head on punching right in between the chops? It's going to be rough. But hang in there. We're going to talk about it, you know, so be prepared because uh, uh, it's going to be some self-examination for everybody as we go forward with these videos. So take care, my friends. God bless.